Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I don't know if you guys know this about Jordan, but this is her first Creative Mornings today. Um, and when she was applying for the position, she was also in the process of getting married. And um, I hear that when she was doing her audition video, she was actually doing it at the airport on her way to her honeymoon. So, <laughs> <laughs> so if that's any indication of the amount of love that she's going to bring to Creative Mornings. I think we are all in store for some really good stuff. So thank you and uh, congrats. Yes. <laughs> this is what it's like to be a professional creative. Uh, we are constantly being asked to make something out of nothing and to make something pretty. Now, common sense tells us that this cannot go on forever, right? <laughs> Eventually, it will run out, it will need to be refilled, right? And I think that we, uh, the creative class, sometimes forget this, or uh, probably more likely, I think that we ignore that, and when we get empty, uh, we just keep going and keep going. And I think that this is how we get burnt out. And I am guilty of this. Um, recently, I got really burnt out. And it's simple. I got disconnected from that thing that made me love this in the first place. So. This talk today is not a silver bullet fix of you know, how to not get burnt out, but there are a few things that I have figured out kind of along the way that I think and I hope you guys will be able to relate to because um, we in this room are all creative people. And that doesn't mean that we have creative jobs or creative hobbies. Uh, our creativity is a personality trait, and it's something that we pursue for an entire lifetime. And we uh, have a relationship with our creativity, and we get to make a choice about that relationship. We can wrestle around with it and fight with it until it makes us cynical and tired and burnt out, or we can choose to be in a healthy relationship with our creativity and nurture it and have fun with it and give a little air and space to this cool little weird gift that we all have. So I was an artsy kid. <laughs> it's okay to laugh, this is really weird. <laughs> um, this is the first painting I ever did as an angsty teenage girl about to go into high school. And <laughs> when I was preparing for this talk, I was trying to remember, like, when was the moment that I, like, first fell in love with this? When did I decide that, you know, being an artist was my thing? And I knew instantly. It was in, like, fourth or fifth grade, and we, it was an art class, we had to do this assignment where we had to do a drawing. And I drew a horse, and, you know, I drew it on a piece of loose leaf paper, and then I ran out of space and drew it, you know, the second half on another sheet of paper and taped it together. <laughs> and I remember taking that out and the other kids at the table looking at it and being impressed. And then I remember the teacher came over and uh, said something like, wow, this is really good. You have a natural talent for this. And it was like, boom, there it is. <laughs> like, I am in love. I am good at something. This, like, this is my talent, cool. So this is what I did. And you know, I, like many creative people, and probably like many of you in this room, was kind of a shy and awkward and sensitive kid and, uh, and was an introvert and still am, which is why things like this are especially terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but you know, 
making art and being creative was always my way of expressing myself. That was what felt comfortable to me to do that, which is why I did weird things uh, like this. <laughs> so I did that through I'm gonna move my water. So I did that through high school, and then it came time to go to college and to decide what do I do next? What do I do with this thing? And I did what I think many creative people do. I, <laughs> I took this pure little nugget of love and then I tried to repackage and wrangle it into something practical and commercial and respectable, <laughs> right? So I went to school for graphic design. And while I was in school, you know, imagine that I am this dark dot and my creativity is this rainbow dot. And, you know, that's my original spark and my love for this. And while I was in school, I still had a very close connection to that thing. <clears throat> you know, I got a fine arts degree still. I was painting and drawing and doing a lot of that throughout my time in school. And then I graduated and I moved to Chicago and you know I got my first couple of jobs and something happened. All of a sudden there were <laughs> a few things between me and that original spark, a few layers of distractions, right? Things like email and meetings, the things that are the bane of our lives. I think you can probably all relate to that. And, but it wasn't so much that I became completely disconnected from it. And, you know, I still, throughout the first several years of my career, I still painted, I showed a few times, and it was still a very big part of my life. And then I started a business. And <laughs> all of a sudden, the tone changed. And my ability to bring home a paycheck became dependent upon my ability to do a whole bunch of things that I had no idea how to do, like sales and networking and invoicing and finding clients and then figuring out what to charge those clients and then getting those clients to pay me, which if anybody has a business or anything, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, so there were some more layers of distractions and you know, the stakes got a little higher, the tone changed, it became, I was more easily distracted by those things and more separated. And then I had a kid. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> not unlike starting a business, that child was dependent upon my ability to do a whole bunch of things that I had no idea how to do. <laughs> so, so I got a little separated from it. And, uh, uh, sorry, I lost my place here. And, you know, here's the thing about that. Our love of creativity is like any other relationship in our lives. At the beginning, it's all intense and connected and tight and it's all sexy, and it's a little bit out of touch with reality. And then you settle in, and the real life part of it starts. Um, I've only been married for a little over six years to that beautiful man right there. <laughs> um, so I am by no means an expert on the subject. But I think that the beauty and the magic of love and of a long-term relationship like the one that we have with our creativity is actually in the day-to-day -day work that we do on it and the little things that we do every day to keep it going and to make sure that it's a good and a healthy relationship. I don't think it's the big grand gestures. And I think our relationship with creativity has to be exactly the same. We have to work on the little things about it every day. And we have to practice it and we have to make time for it even when we really don't want to and we're tired and we have a lot of distractions you know, like that because those things are not gonna go away 
And there's no perfect day for us to do our creativity. We have to be able to find time for it amidst all of the other distractions in our lives. And you know, we have to be able to find a way to stay connected to that original spark. And this, to me, is the definition of hustle. <laughs> not the version that shows up on Instagram four million times. <laughs> um, so I don't really have a perfect segue here, so, uh, but I cannot talk about love without talking about these two. <laughs> um, so my son is almost two, and before we got pregnant, we were really scared. We were like scared of how our lives were gonna change, and I especially was very scared of uh, how it was gonna affect my business and my creativity and whether or not people were gonna take me seriously and all of these things that run through our heads, right? Especially, you know, women in the room can probably relate to that. Um, and when people talk about having kids, they really only ever talk about the bad stuff. You know, they, they give you advice about how you're never gonna sleep again. And, you know, I think that sometimes we forget to talk about the good stuff. So here's the cool thing. Um, sometimes our job as creative people is to notice the things that no one else notices and to assign beauty and interest to everyday and very mundane objects. And that is exactly what kids do every day with every single thing. And if you've hung out with a kid recently, you know, you know, even just watching them walk down the street and pick up sticks is uh, like a magical experience. <laughs> um, and Watching my son do this has reminded me of these things about my own relationship with creativity that I do need to take time to notice all these little things and find something interesting about little everyday objects and find little moments in every day that can be creative. Um, he has helped me uh, to start to reconnect with that original spark. So this relationship with creativity I'm talking about, um, I think is also bound by the old cliche that in order to love another person, you have to first love yourself. <laughs> I, hope you <laughs> I hope you all know who that is. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I wanna tell a little story here. Um, last summer, I was working late one night and um, it was raining like hell, and I was on a deadline, and I was very tired and kind of burnt out. And when I finally left uh, the studio, which uh, at the time was in the West Bottoms, um, I go out to the back parking lot, and it has become a small lake. <laughs> and my car is about 100 yards away, and so I, you know, I'm tired and I make probably kind of a dumb decision to wade through the lake. And I step off an underwater curb and I fall into this lake. <laughs> and with me goes my laptop and my camera and my Wacom and my phone. And my first thought when I fall is not my own safety in this dark lake. <laughs> it is, oh my God, my laptop, and oh my God, I'm on a deadline, and what am I gonna do? I have to present this project in two days. What am I gonna do? And instead of you know taking a moment to recharge and realize like, wow, I'm kind of tired. <laughs> I made kind of a dumb decision tonight. I immediately set about replacing all of that stuff. And within no less than 12 hours, I had a brand new laptop and a new phone and I was back up and running and I had what I considered to be all of my most important tools restored and I was good to go. Well then, uh, about a month after that, I was in my house and um, I was walking down the steps in my socks, stupidly, and I slipped and fell. 
And it was like, ah, that hurts a little bit. And, you know, it kind of kept hurting, but I kind of ignored it. And then I saw a doctor and it was like, yeah, okay. And then it got worse and worse and kind of kept going over time until the point where I, like, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't work, I couldn't lift up my son, and I finally go and I get an MRI and it shows that I have two discs herniated in my back. And this is the moment that I wake up. And it feels like, to me, the first time that people saw a photo of the Earth back in the <laughs> 70s. <laughs> I know, on a smaller scale, of course. Um, <laughs> But when people first saw this photo, uh, it was so beautiful, and they thought, wow, we need to take care of this. And that was the dawn of our environmental movement that still goes today. And seeing that MRI made me realize, like, oh my gosh, like, what am I doing? <laughs> I need to take care of myself. And it was so crazy that I replaced my computer in less than 12 hours, and yet it took me about seven months to like finally snap into place and start like actually putting myself first and taking care of myself. I realized that I am the most important tool in my business, not my computer. <laughs> so here is the lesson. <laughs> and probably something I should tattoo to my arm. <laughs> so if we're gonna be in this relationship with creativity, we have to first take care of ourselves because if we're not okay and we're broken, none of that other stuff really matters. And we have to be kind to ourselves. You know, we, especially the ladies of the room, we uh, sometimes say things to ourselves that we would never say to another person, right? Like we have to remember that uh, we are this important tool and our source of creativity is all in here. And if we're good, then we can create. So I will leave you with this. When I got kind of burnt out, I immediately started to fantasize about what I was gonna do instead, right? That's the uh, inspiration for the name tag today. Uh, you know, what, what is your career, what would you do? And I was like, I'm gonna write a zombie novel. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, no, that seems really hard. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, I'm gonna be a massage therapist. <laughs> that seems really, like, relaxing. And I think we do this, right? We get burnt out and we're like, we just take, we wanna take this energy that we have and just like shift it over to something else and refocus it and start pouring into another thing just to like take our mind off of that thing that is burning us out. But you know, this reminded me of a client that I had a few years ago. And she was this high power, awesome attorney in Chicago, very smart woman. And she also really liked to bake. And she, probably like many attorneys, got burnt out. And she said, okay, I'm gonna open a bakery. And um, she did it. <laughs> and she moved to this little idyllic town in Vermont, and she opened the cutest bakery ever. And I was like, wow, you did it. I was like, I'm so impressed you did it. You are living the dream. You did what all of us say we're gonna do, and none of us ever do. I'm so impressed. <laughs> And then about three months later, she was like, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> this was not what I thought it was gonna be. I have to get up at two in the morning every day to start baking and the work is very manual and I have to hire people and fire people and I have to keep inventory. And it just, it wasn't right for me. And she went back to being an attorney. And I think the lesson here and the point that I'm trying to make is that the grass is always greener <laughs> on the other side. And you know, when we get burnt out, we wanna do that, right? So the next time you are feeling burnt out, maybe it is right now, today, um, instead of looking out and trying to refocus into something else, 
first look in and ask yourself, how did I get here? And what do I need right now? Like, am I okay? And then, you know, how can I reconnect with that spark that I had? Because like I said at the beginning, we can choose to have this, you know, hateful relationship with our creativity that we wrestle with that makes us crazy and burnt out, or we can choose to uh, have this healthy relationship with creativity that we can give you know, air and space and time to, and most importantly, we can show it some love. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs>